It's production time. I'm Reed Stefan, realist puppet in the game. Today we're talking about lead vocals. I'm going to show you how I process my lead vocals, talk a little bit about the theory behind why I choose to process them in this way, as well as run through an example of a song that I recently released. So let's jump into an example. This is a song that got released a couple months ago. It's called Moderation. I produced it for Kara. I'm gonna show you the example and then we're gonna go through and dissect the processing in this lead vocal. Let's solo our lead vocal. So satisfied, higher than high. They tell me slow down, but I don't know how. Anyways, uh, so let's delete all this processing. Let's delete our sends and let's go back and reconstruct this. So our dry vocal obviously sounds so very unflattering compared to the finished vocal. Uh, we're gonna start out by putting some Ableton plugins on here, uh, starting with multi-band dynamics. This OTT preset is pretty close to what we're already looking for. We just have to change a few parameters in here. Uh, obviously, this is such an extreme multi-band compression preset that we're only gonna use this at about 30% on the wet dry amount. And then the rest of it is just gonna be moving these things. If you hold your mouse over the end of it, you see it turns into the bracket tool. Uh, so you're just going to drag it all the way up to the end without letting go, then drag it back a little bit, and then let go. And uh, I'm going to do the same thing all the way to the end just to get rid of that blue one, and then just a little bit behind this. And uh, let's hear what this does. So satisfied. Already doing a lot. Than high. What this is doing is just adding some compression to the high and mid band and completely removing the low band. And then our wet dry knob is at 30% so that it's not... So Completely so crushed. So um, uh, next, we are going to EQ this. Uh, I always low cut my vocals to figure out where I want to low cut them. I usually uh, let me make a loop. I usually start by going way too far. And then just reintroducing the bass until it sounds good. I find I have an easier time picking the right point if I start too high and bring it back down than if I were to start low and slowly cut it out. So let's play this so out. Satisfied, than We're looking high. for the point at which it starts to sound natural it told again. Me slow down, but I don't know how. I don't know how. And I think that's going to be just around 200 for this vocal. Uh, so now within this recording, there are going to be some frequencies that just don't sound good. And we want to use this EQ to kind of pick those out. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our next band. We're going to make a really high Q. And uh, then we're going to hit this headphone button. And we're going to make sure our vocal is soloed. And we're just going to start sweeping through the frequencies. And we're going to be listening for the ones that are ringing. They're all going to sound like they're ringing a little bit. But we're going to look, listen for the ones that are ringing louder than the others. Like right there, that kind of jumps out at me right it there. Me slow down, but so I we're just going to dip that one. I don't know how. Round three, and now let's move on to the next one. Turn our cue all the way up. It's already soloed. This is one of the really exciting parts of being a music producer. Sweeping frequencies. Let's get rid of that one. Let's turn on another one. I usually end up finding a couple. Very infrequently do I find none. Once in a while I need to get another EQ just because I keep finding more. It just uh, depends on how specific you want to get, how many you want to dig for, or how many you find that sound problematic to you. What these are are the overtones. And uh, by ducking the overtones, we are making space in the mix for the, the frequencies that we do want by just cleaning out all the ones that we don't, which will in turn just give us a louder finished product. I don't like that one. 
Oops. So satisfied. Let's duck that one. High earth and high. We're just gonna keep it's on going. Only slow down, but They kind of all sound like they're ringing right there. But I think this one around here is the worst. We're just listening for how loud the ringing is. Let's get rid of that one too. It's kind of right on top of that last one, but that's all right. Let's go open up this one. High Q. So satisfied. Oops. Uh, this is supposed to be one of these. All right, this will be our last one. Cool. So, so we have uh, cut out high earth and high. everything that we don't want in our vocal. And when we turn this EQ off, it kind of just sounds boxy and mid rangey instead of clear and kind of in the front. So satisfied. High earth and high. They tell me it's not. Cool. Moving on, it is time to compress this a little bit more. Um, I use the 1176 compressor from UAD. Waves has an 1176 compressor. If you don't have Waves or UAD or anybody else who makes an 1176 style compressor, you could probably get very similar results just from the glue compressor in Ableton. Um, so we are going to uh, use this to add some compression me, down, and some character. But I don't know how. Don't Turn the ratio how. up to 8 to 1. We're going to do a slow attack. So and a faster release. High earth and high. They tell me come down, but I don't know how. I don't know how. Cool. So satisfied. High earth and high. They tell me slow down. Back off the I input gain a little bit. Alright, and next we're going to follow it up with an LA2A style compressor. Same deal, Waves makes one, UAD makes one, a lot of people make one. Um, I use this so much that I actually bought the real thing for my microphone, so I record my vocals on the way in through one of these. Tell me slow down, but, uh, but I, I still use this how. as a plugin because it is a great final like limiter or just shave off the peaks kind of. But I don't know how. I don't know how. So we're just gonna boost the input gain, so decrease the peak reduction a little bit. High earth and high. They tell me come down. Cool. And now after running it through all these compressors, it kind of builds up a little bit more low end. So we're just gonna do a shallow roll off on the low end around the same spot. Tell me slow down, but I don't know how. I don't know how. Just to get any unnecessarily uh, rumbly frequencies out of there. Um, so that's really it for how I'm gonna process this lead vocal. Actually, one more thing. A lead vocal is usually mono, so to uh, kind of force this back into mono, I use this utility to just take either the left or right channel only, same thing. But, uh, this will basically force, no matter what goes on before this plugin, this will basically force the output to be in mono. And if it's your lead vocal, you always want it to be the center of attention, and there's nothing more centered than mono. Tell me slow down, but I don't know how, I don't know how. Cool, so let's hear this with the rest of our- Tell me slow down, but I don't know how, I don't know let's how. Let's turn this back down. So satisfied. All right, now obviously this is a little bit dry, so I'm going to be putting some reverb and delay on this by doing it through a return bus. Now, our for delay, I'll use uh, H delay. This is simple waves plugin that I use a lot. Uh, we're going to put in a quarter note delay, and we're going to do it with a low feedback. Turn this analog shit off. I hate that fucking knob. It's just like this dumbass hissing noise that 
doesn't really help anything. I always turn that analog thing off when I use these H delay plugins. Um, let's see, we'll do a, uh, and let's send this at like minus 10. So that means our delays will be 10 decibels quieter than our lead. Tell me slow down, but I don't know how. I don't know how. All right, that might be a little bit too loud. Let's try minus 12. And uh, we are also going to be doing some sidechain. Um, it's not very often as a dance music producer that I sidechain to something other than a kick drum, but today we are sidechaining our delay bus to our lead vocal. Tell uh, me slow down, but I don't know how. I don't know how. So what this is doing is ducking the volume of our delays when the singer is singing. That way the delays are not competing with the dry vocals so much during the verse, during any part of the song, because I think keeping the lyrics as easy and clear to understand as possible is kind of the key. When you're putting together a vocal record, and while delays do make things sound cool, they also make everything kind of a big pile of mush, so you have to be very careful with how much of it you use, because while you gain some, ooh, this sounds more interesting, you lose a little bit of ability to understand what the lyrics are, so I use this to kind of find that happy middle point between wet and dry. Tell me slow down, but I don't know how. Time to wet I dry down on this, it's not full. So cool. So now we have delays in there, and the delays are filling the gaps between the lyrics very nicely. Uh, I'm happy with that. Moving on, let's add some reverb to this. Um, I'll use. I believe in this song I used the vintage verb. Um, I didn't change too much other than I really like the 1980s preset in this. Let's send uh Tell me slow down, but I don't know how. Let's do a shorter tail. I don't know how. Cut some of the lows out. So Let's see, I might copy and paste the sidechain plugin onto the reverb too and see if it helps. Sometimes it helps, sometimes it makes it sound all jumpy. Tell me slow down, but I don't know how. I don't know how. So satisfied. Cool. Higher than high. So I think we still have a lush, wet, saturated sounding vocal, but uh I think the sidechain trick alone just helped it maintain its clarity, which if the if you want people to understand your lyrics, maintaining the clarity of your lead vocal, I think is of the utmost importance. Um, so this trick I use in just about every vocal I do. Uh, obviously my knob positions are different. Sometimes I choose different EQs or, or different compressors, depending on what kind of sound I'm trying to achieve. But I think the general principle of keeping your lead vocal very dry, very clean, get rid of all the frequencies that don't need to be there, just compress the life out of anything that you do want in there, and then send it off to your effects instead of putting the effects straight on the channel because the more clean mono and centered you can keep the lead vocal I think the more in your face that channel will sound in your final mix down um, so that's all I wanted to share with you guys I'll be doing more videos specifically about vocals because this has become such a huge part of my day-to-day -day just job I guess you could call it is working with vocals I'll catch you guys next time